everybody. Welcome to my talk. Um, before we get started, if possible, like, could I get a quick show of hands? Who has been involved in, say, a critical incident on a weekend where they, something's happened, you've been called on a weekend, and there's an issue, right? I've had that. You know, it's a tough, tough time for an engineer, right? Okay, so it's not only frustrating when that happens, right? But um, the, it has significant impact on your, on your business and the revenue that can, that can happen, right? If you consider Amazon.com, for example, if the buy now button didn't work for 10 minutes, the impact on our business would be in, in millions, of ha millions of dollars revenue. Um, not just that, customer trust and, and, uh, is, is a significant impact too, which is important to the company. Okay, my name is Rob Bradley. I'm gonna talk to you today about integrating Amazon Code Catalyst uh, with uh, AWS Device Farm. Okay, so our, um, let me move on in the slide. Uh, we have an agenda here. What I'm gonna do is talk about shift left in the development cycle where uh, we, we want to uh, talk about that theory. Um, and then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to introduce to you Amazon Code Catalyst and AWS Device Farm. Um, we're then going to have a short demo that shows the uh, automation and the, uh, um, we've developed a GitHub action that I, can that I can show to you today. And I'm going to be able to give you some takeaways that you can take away yourselves. OK, so as I mentioned, we were going to talk to you about the development cycle. Here we have a classic. Um, uh, basically five phase delivery cycle where we have develop, uh, build, test, uh, and deploy. Um, if we consider a traditional, test a, a traditional uh, delivery model here, which is uh, where the peak of the graph is towards the, is towards the right hand side, this is where a lot of um, effort is consumed in that release process. Um, let me introduce to you a second uh, line to the graph, which is the shift left principle where what we're doing is we are empowering developers to do testing as they're committing their code. So I want you to focus on this area here. And what we're looking to do with this concept is reduce that cycle down, reduce the, reduce the effort by shifting left. So if we shift that effort to the developers, giving them that ability to test their code, we are reducing the effort that we see here. OK. So let me introduce to you uh, Amazon Code Catalyst. So Amazon Code Catalyst is a unified software development uh, environment and service. It allows developers to quickly build and um, develop applications uh, because everything they need is within one uh, unified source. We have um, automated workflows in the form of CI CD pipelines where the developer can see visually where those automations are failing. What I want to introduce to you next is AWS Device Farm. AWS Device Farm is, uh, is a, a remote testing service that allows you to test web applications remotely in a browser. Um, it can improve the quality of your test results because what, what, you, what you get or what the developer gets is test artifacts that are generated within Device Farm and those are then sent back to Code Catalyst itself. Um, Device Farm allows the engineer to test the websites without provisioning hardware. Um, it speeds up the testing too, because Device Farm allows you to test in parallel. So you can kick off um, multiple tests in one go and get the results back at the same time. OK, so um, let me show you what we've done with our um, development process. We have, um, what we've done is we've linked the two services together using a GitHub action. Uh, and you're going to be able to take this GitHub action at the end of the presentation and try it out yourselves. Um, what you've got here is you have a developer who commits their code within Code Catalyst. Then what happens is the action runs as part of the pipeline. And then that action invokes the run within Device Farm. And then the artifacts that are generated are pulled back into Code Catalyst for the, for the uh, engineer. So they never have to leave Code Catalyst in order to get those test results. And we can see here just an example of the two types of artifacts that come back. Um, we have um, screen recordings, which show how the, the, the browser is working. Um, and we also have a test result file as well. OK, so let's get into the demo. Um, thankfully, Amazon.com didn't let me produce this demo on their website. So I've produced a, a to-do app here, which is just a simple to-do application. What we can see here is the app's application's functionality. Um, I have it hosted on CloudFront, so it's publicly available, but private testing is available on Device Farm as well. So you can see here my web UI, I create a task 
So I'm creating a task with my title. I'm doing all of this manually. This is very time consuming. What I'm doing here, I'm entering in the description for the task. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to save that task into my application. So what we see here, my representation of my task, I can test the UI functionality of the task by clicking on it and seeing how that's behaving. I can also test out different parts of the UI to see how that behaves as well. And I can also complete my task as well. So this is me performing a, a, a UI-based test manually. OK. So let's move on now. Um, this talk is basically designed to show you how you can integrate Device Farm with CoCatalyst. I'm not going to go into detail too much on CoCatalyst, but what I'm going to do is introduce to you how the service looks. So this is what you see when you log into CoCatalyst. Um, what we've got here is, uh, just move on slightly, these are recordings. So what we've got here is we have a um, name of my project. I have the source repositories that are part of my project, so it could be made up of multiple repositories. I'm allowed to invite members of my team to collaborate with me. So I've got a collaborative experience there. If I move on, I have a central place that I can monitor my issues on my project. I can review my code that exists within CoCatalyst. So here we have my source code for this repo. I can also generate and review pull requests against the uh, project. And what we're going to dive into here is I can see where my CI CD pipeline uh, exists as well. So if we have a look at workflows, this is what a classic workflow screen looks like in CoCatalyst. See the name of the workflow. We can also see the status of the previous workflow runs. If we expand this, we can see the runs that are associated with the commit ID, and I can see when that actually happened. So let's dive into this run, and we'll take a look at what that looks like. One of my favorite features about CoCatalyst is this visual representation of what the pipeline looks like. So you get a very nice um, visual representation. I can see green ticks against each of my actions. I have an initial workflow source, which is where my code is being pulled in. I can see the duration of how it ran. And as I go down, you can see a sequential flow with parallel actions that can happen at the same time. So here we have two parallel actions occurring on the pipeline. These could be classically um, compile source code, build source code. You can see this build package here. What we can do is we can review the source that was used. We can also uh, have a look at the logs that were made available to me as well, and the reports and the configuration as well associated with that. OK. It's got some more stats about the way the configuration looks. And again, more detailed logs about how every step ran in the development pipeline. OK. So the action that I introduced to you earlier is a device farm action that we're going to look at on the last three boxes of the pipeline here. What we can see here, the first action in the pipeline goes off to device farm and creates a project for me. My developer hasn't had to go to AWS device farm and create a project. This action is taking care of that, meaning that the developer is not leaving Code Catalyst. They're getting that unified development experience. One of the outputs of this action is my ARN for my um, device farm project. And that is passed to the next stage in my pipeline, which is where my tests are being executed from. What we can see here are the logs again. It's, it's exporting the ARN as a environment variable that Code Catalyst can use. And then if we move on, we can see here, let's move on, if we zoom in a little bit, I can see my next action is actually the run action for the tests. And here's where you can integrate your own testing framework. I've got examples on PyTest or Jest, depending on what you want to use for your test wrapper. Here we are, we're pulling in the environment variable from the previous step. And then finally, I've got my execution of my tests. OK, we're just moving to the final stage. The final stage of the pipeline is where I'm pulling my resources and my uh, artifacts from Device Farm into Code Catalyst. Co um, AWS Device Farm produces screen recordings 
of what, the what happened in the test, but it also produces um, test reports as well, which we can see here. So let's dive into those test reports and have a look. So my test report here contains three tests that occurred on my web UI. Should, complete a new, should create a new task, should complete a task, and it should complete a task within 10 seconds. For my example here, I can see more detailed logs about how that test executed. And what Device Farm has done, what um, Code Catalyst has done, is it's gone off to Device Farm and it's invoked those tests. Here you can see the tests happening on, on Google Chrome and Firefox, and you can see them happening in parallel and get that detailed report. And as you can see, I have my spec files here as well that denote how the test performed. So if we move on, we can have a look at what those artifacts look like. So let's move forward. What I have here is one of the artifact files that's within Code Catalyst that came from Device Farm. Let's expand that zip and have a look inside of that zip and see what we've got. So we've got the, the zip file here is the name of my repo. And here are my two executions. I have one for Chrome and one for Firefox. What inside of here, I can see a video output of what actually happened on Device Farm. Blink and you miss it, because this happens in about 10 seconds. So here we see a task being created automatically and the task completing automatically as well. So this was executed remotely on Device Farm. OK. So let's move on, and I'll talk you through uh, some of our source code that we've got here. This is what your developer might see when they clone down a project uh, related to this. What we've got here is the layout of the project. I have a back end, which contains my infrastructure as code, which might have a DynamoDB in there. It might have various different infrastructure to make my application work. You can see here I have a Lambda. And I have the test folder there that's associated with previous parts of the pipeline as well. I have a CDK file, which defines my infrastructure that gets deployed. And then the next folder I want to talk about is the front end. So this is what the front end we saw when I was creating that task. This was the front end that was being um, tested automatically by Device Farm. As a developer, I might be introducing features into my UI. As I'm introducing these features, um, I can build tests and allow those tests to execute. The final folder, and this is one of the key concepts of the action that we created, was I would like all of my um, developers to be able to have one, one folder where they can bring all of their tests to, drop them in that folder, and commit those tests. This is just how I have my repo set up, but you could have a different testing framework in place if you want that. OK, so next what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the uh, configuration file. This is my WDIO configuration file. Let's press play. What we can see here is I'm, uh, I have a definition of where my tests exist. I can specify how many instances I want to run in concurrency. So I've specified a limit of four. I can specify the browsers that I want to test against. So here I've got Chrome and Firefox. I'm, I'm basically here suggesting that I want to use the Mocha testing framework. So I have this control over how I want my tests to run. And then here we can see this is where that environment variable is being pulled in from the action. So that's used by the Code Catalyst system itself. And then finally, we're using JUnit to produce test reports for, uh, for the developer to have back in Code Catalyst. OK, let's move on and take a look at what one of our test specs look like. So this is what um, one of my test spec looks like. This is, you see here, should create a new task. I have my URL in this test file, but that can be passed in as an environment variable. Here we have describe the to-do test. So this is like the harness of my test that exists. Should create a task. What we're seeing here is various different interactions with the Selenium grid that's running on Device Farm. So what we've got here is check that the browser title equals to-do app. Um, again, this could be checked that the Amazon button is working on Amazon.com. Um, but obviously, this contains my code that interacts with the UI. OK, so here we go. Should complete a task. And then we have various weights and confirmations that exist as well. So I'm getting this uh, feedback as I'm working within the tool. OK, I promised that we would have some takeaways, so we'll come on to those in a minute. We talked about shifting left in the development cycle and, and reducing the effort it takes when you have testing later in a development cycle. 
Next, we talked about promoting a test-driven development. Code Catalyst really helps here because your engineers are using a unified environment and they're reducing that context switching. AWS Device Farm is reducing the undifferentiated heavy lifting. So the engineer, the developer, hasn't had to think about which, what sort of grid size do I need, what infrastructure do I need in place. Um, that's really helping out here as well. And then what we've got is AWS Device Farm provides efficient testing at scale. So I can execute tests in parallel on my device farm. And then finally, I mentioned just before, AWS Device Farm, uh, Amazon Code Catalyst, reduces that context switching between tools. So I have this single UI. I've got my VS Code. I don't have to go off to Device Farm, set it up. I don't have to go off to other tools as well to set that up too. OK. I want to say thank you so much. You've been a fantastic audience. Um, here we have a couple of QR codes. The one on the left is our GitHub action that you can um, take away with you. This, this will allow you to play with that uh, code as well. And then finally, we've got our, uh, a LinkedIn link where you can reach out to myself and connect. Um, I'm going to be around at the Booth entrance over there. So I can take kind of one-to-one -one questions if you want to have a chat about this integration further. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Don't forget to rate this Lightning Talk in the uh, Events app. That would be fantastic.